Charles Darwin. Genius or monster. The name immediately arouses controversy among the biblical religions who attack the scientific theory of evolution with a verve reminiscent of the Spanish Inquisition in full cry. So what makes Darwin's theory so dangerous? Many of us have no idea. We have a vague uneasiness that Darwin is a bad thing. But why? Darwin has given man the undeniable scientific proof to rid the world of biblical superstition and hate forever. That is why men of God will lie to thoughts, cheat and mislead their congregations, use false degrees and misquote whenever the feeling takes them to prove that their version of the beginning of life is the right one, even without a scrap of evidence. For those of you, like me, who did not have the benefit of a science education, this is why the modern scientific theory of evolution strikes the fear of God into the religions based on the Bible. It is simple and devastating. The modern scientific theory of evolution proves beyond doubt there was no first man or first woman as the ones described in Genesis, with the woman being conjured up out of the man's rib. No Adam and no Eve. Therefore, no original sin, no fall, and no need for God to send his only begotten son to redeem the world. End of story. Without Adam and Eve and their act of disobedience to God, the religions based on the Bible have nowhere to go. The Bible without Adam and Eve is like Hamlet without the Prince of Denmark. Game, set and match to the modern scientific theory of evolution. Darwin was a Christian. He knew what he'd done, even though at the time he didn't know how to prove it. He put off the fatal pronouncement for 20 years as he realized that this spelt the end to the established religions. He was right. The modern scientific theory of evolution is as sound as Newton's theory of gravity and Einstein's theory of relativity. Darwin came up with a mechanism of how evolution happens. He didn't have much, in fact, any evidence for human evolution. The reason we know Adam and Eve didn't exist came primarily after Darwin. We have now the genetic evidence that relates us to greater apes, fossil evidence showing our primate origins, and DNA marker evidence that traces our origins precisely to a matrilineal ancestor of 150,000 years ago and a patrilineal ancestor of 60,000 years ago. Darwin showed us the mechanism for how evolution works. But the physical evidence is the conclusive proof that we did in fact evolve and did not come from Adam and Eve. What's so perfect about all the evidence is that it is all consistent with the same time frame, the same place and the same means. The heads of the theist religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, know this only too well, but they have 2,500 years of investment in this myth and they're not going to see their livings, power and palaces disappear overnight, as should happen if the world woke up. So many of them, notably the creationists, have embarked on the impossible task of proving Darwin wrong. This is like King Canute trying to stop the tide coming in but they're doing a very good holding job and are endangering the whole field of recognized science by muddying the waters in any way they can, even trying to force their unscientific claims into science lessons. The point is, and must be stressed over and over again, that Darwin's original insight proves without question there was no first man and no first woman, no Adam, no Eve, no first humans to commit the original sin. 
It does not prove there is no God. It doesn't have to. That is not the theory's purpose. The Big Bang and how life began is not dealt with by Darwin. But the first humans and original sin are. There may be a God, but it is not the God of the Bible. Humans are not born in a state of sin and do not need to be redeemed. Curtain down. Scientists obviously know this, although they never give any indication that they do. If today's scientists had had the benefit of a sound religious education, they would know just how devastating this little fact can be if you are a believer. You have to believe in Adam and Eve and the fall of man, or else there is no point to what follows. Darwin's insight proves the Bible is a work of fiction, and it's time to put it back on the shelf and enjoy life, free from the fear of a bad-tempered God, and go out and smell the roses. Science and the scientific infrastructure have made the world the wonderful, exciting place it is today. Now is not the time to plunge the world back into the dark ages as the creationists would like, to a world of subjugation of women, bloody religious wars, eternal torment and compromised education. We have outgrown such Bronze Age nonsense. 2009 is the double centenary of Darwin's birth. Let us all celebrate this remarkable man.